Well, hello. Today is Monday, February 10th, 2020. My name is Angela Hooper Minifield, and this is your HR Moment with Minifield & Associates. So, hopefully you guys had a great weekend. I had a pretty good one myself. So I am just going to jump right into today's HR Moment and talk a little bit about the phrase that's often used in training environments, which is called managing up. Oftentimes, um, when I'm doing trainings and workshops, uh, or even having coaching discussions, employees tend to complain about us. <laughs> and when I say us, I mean those of us who are supervisors. Um, some supervisors are a little annoying, and um, I have to actually side with the employee when they share some of the things the supervisor does. An illustration of that is one time I was doing a training and the employees um, pointed out to me that their boss, who likes to talk and often it has nothing to do with work, would typically call them five minutes before quitting time. And it wasn't just that he was calling, but he was wanting to talk and sometimes talk for like an hour or so. And it would impede their ability to leave work. Um, this was, um, and or if they were on the cell phone, you know, they're they're driving home and walking into the house, you know, still on the phone, and their family is looking at them like, okay, you've been at work all day. And so, trying to figure out, you know, how do you manage that? You don't want to be disrespectful to the boss, but at the same time, you're off work, and it's it's really inconsiderate. And so, I've often used the phrase to figure out how to manage up. As employees, we have to figure out not only how to manage those who we have direct authority over or who report to us, but we also have to figure out how to manage our managers or manage up. This is a skill that I think everybody needs, but one of the places that we can actually learn it is within our organization. And so what do I mean by that? Some of us are that second tiered leader in the organization or supervisor. And so what often happens is, the lower level supervisor comes to us because that middle person is impeding their ability to do their job. And sometime again, as I said earlier, these complaints and concerns are legitimate and true. Um, and often because we care about these people, we want to help them. And so we intercede, we uh, address the issues on their behalf. But really what we're doing is we're, we're kind of crippling them a little bit. We're being a crutch and we don't want to be a crutch to them. We want to help them. We want to grow them. So we have to coach them on how to coach up to that supervisor. And so one of the simple things we can do is equip them and help them figure out what are those words that they can say and or, you know, write in order to get what they need from their supervisor. So one of the ways, here's an example of how I coached up. I worked for a guy one time who had a strong reputation for being a fierce leader. He was kind of gruff. Um, he'd been known to lay out some people with some words a time or two. Now, none of this ever happened to me. And we can talk about why I think that is in another uh, HR moment. But nonetheless, um, I, became, I came to realize really quickly that this particular person seemed to be at ease and more relaxed when they would be on their, as I would say, their smoke breaks. And so one of my ways to manage up was to meet them where they were. So when I would want to have in-depth discussions, get their thoughts on things, I would find them at a place where I feel like they were more open and respect, uh, receptive to that conversation. So I would go on quote unquote smoke breaks. And I would jokingly tell my team, I was like, hey, I'm gonna go outside and smoke. Now they knew I wasn't smoking, I don't smoke, but they got what I was saying. What I was saying is my boss smokes. And this is where he tends to be more relaxed and uh, able to think and you know less defensive, more open-minded. And so um, this was a place I would meet him. Another time I did a detailed assignment in DC it became real uh, apparent to me that my administrator at the time definitely wasn't a morning person. So typically got to work like right before start time, but often worked late. So I availed myself. I hung around sometimes after hours. They would see my light was on. They'd reach out, you know, hey, you want to go grab something, eat after work, yada, yada, yada. The long, the long and short of it is I figured out how to meet them where they were and I managed up. 
We are trying to build rapport and connection with people. This is in all aspects of our work. This is our clients, our customers, the people we serve if we're in public service, uh, nonprofits, our peers, but also up. How do you build a connection with someone? You meet them where they are. So help your team manage up. Teach them some of the skills that hopefully you've acquired. If you haven't acquired those, then you figure out how to manage up, but then teach your team how to do it. But I leave you with this. Do not become a crutch for those people on your team who don't feel valued or supported or, at, or like they can speak to their supervisor. Because whether you realize it or not, you are training them to come to you. When you fix people's problem and there's clearly an established hierarchy or order of things and how they should handle them, when you circumvent that, even with the best intentions, you are training those people to bring their problems to you. What you want to train them to do or coach them up to do is figure out how to resolve them. So again, mentor them, coach them, be a thinking partner, but you have to kind of stop doing that. Otherwise, 10 years from now, guess what? They'll still be bringing you their problems. So this has been today's HR Moment. My name is Angela Hooper Minifield with Minifield & Associates. I hope you guys have a great day and you're having a great week and I look forward to seeing you Wednesday. We are officially on the Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Talk to you later. Bye.